In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build REST APIs with PowerShell Universal. PowerShell Universal is the ultimate platform for building web-based IT tools with PowerShell. And what you can do uh, with one of the features of PowerShell Universal is use uh, PowerShell to actually build REST APIs that you can call from pretty much any system that can talk over HTTP. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're actually gonna use the PowerShell Universal um, Visual Studio Code extension to uh, develop a couple of REST APIs and show some of the features of the PowerShell uh, Universal REST API feature. Um, so I have uh, the PowerShell Universal extension installed here. You can see I'm running version 1.4.1 of the extension and I'm running version 1.3.2 of PowerShell Universal. So on the left-hand side, you can click this PowerShell Universal um, icon in the tab on the activity uh, pane over here. And then um, when you click that, it's actually going to start up PowerShell Universal. It's going to download it if you don't have it installed first. And then it'll start it up on port 5000. And you'll have access to some of the features of PowerShell Universal, including APIs, dashboards, um, scripts, configuration files, and then some help information at the bottom there. So we're looking at APIs today, and one of the main um, kind of concepts with PowerShell Universal is that all the um, configuration is done via PowerShell scripts. So if you go to the APIs tab and you click this uh, open endpoints.ps1, that will actually open this endpoints.ps1 file that then you can um, start to edit endpoints uh, for your PowerShell Universal instance. Um, and then uh, if you wanted to, you could actually click this button here to open up a web browser that will take you to the PowerShell Universal Admin Console. So you can see your APIs um, kind of as they were in uh, this web console as well. So what we're actually gonna do is create some APIs just using PowerShell script uh, inside Visual Studio Code here. So uh, first of all, you can see that I have a single API defined here and um, it is using the slash hello URL, and it's gonna return the text hello. Um, in my API's view, it's actually picking up on that PS1 file having this particular configuration and showing us this API over here. If I click the insert invoke rest method to console button, it's actually going to uh, insert the invoke rest method uh, directly into the PowerShell integrated console here inside Visual Studio Code. And if I click uh, or hit enter on that, it's actually going to uh, invoke that HTTP request and return the data to PowerShell. And what it actually did is it went and made this HTTP request um, to our PowerShell Universal server, and then it called this PowerShell script and returned hello. So you could return pretty or return or invoke any PowerShell script you'd like inside this endpoint script block here. So we're going to look at some various ways that you can actually um, configure um, endpoints. So uh, in this example, we looked at a, a po or a get endpoint, but now let's actually look at a post endpoint. So a get endpoint is actually for returning data, and a post endpoint is for uh, sending data. So I can just copy and paste uh, this PSU endpoint into uh, my endpoints.ps1 file. And if I click refresh, what you're gonna see is that PowerShell Universal has automatically refreshed um, itself. So it like, realizes that this new endpoint is available. And what we can do is we can actually call that endpoint. So what I'm doing in this um, example is I'm actually using post, which uh, in this case, it actually accepts a body variable, which will contain um, the data that we are pretty much sending up to um, the endpoint. So what I can do there is I can use invoke rest method and specify the URL uh, that I just specified here. And that is the slash user um, pretty much uh, base URL. And then I'm gonna specify a body parameter. And in this case, I'm actually going to take a hash table and convert it to JSON. So I'm sending in a user name property, um, sending it to my name, Adam, and converting it to JSON, and then using the method post. And then in my endpoint, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna return this body variable, and the body variable is just a string of JSON. And if I use the correct parameter there, you'll see that I have actually uh, invoked my user endpoint, and it's returned the value back to me. Since this was uh, JSON, it'll automatically convert it um, using invoke rest method back to a PS custom object. So then you have uh, the properties of that object returned. 
So I could have done anything with that endpoint. I could have went and created a user in Active Directory or added a mailbox to Exchange, anything like that. All right, so now let's actually uh, look at some of the variables that are available for our endpoints. So as you can see, uh, the body variable is a custom variable that's kind of available to us. Um, but another variable that might be handy is the headers variable. So with HTTP requests, you can actually send in headers and headers are just name or key value pairs that pretty much denote particular aspects of the HTTP request. Uh, these might include things about like uh, the user agent or the browser or whatever that's calling your um, your endpoint along with things like authorization, tokens, and that kind of thing. But you can actually just use the headers, uh, the headers variable inside your endpoints. And then you can uh, take advantage of that to uh, kind of get the various aspect or properties out of those headers. It's just a hash table. So if you wanted to get um, certain things out of there, you could. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use invoke rest method to call this group endpoint and specify a custom header of nice equals cool. And um, what you're gonna see here is since I'm just printing those headers back out, uh, it is going to return those to uh, my console down here. So there are some basic headers that are included automatically, um, such as the host and the user agent string. You can see that we're sending this from PowerShell 7.0.3. And then you can see our custom header over here on the very right side, nice and cool. So you can use headers to kind of dictate what your requests do based on those headers. Another thing that you can do inside PowerShell Universal is define dynamic um, endpoint variables. So uh, one concept of REST is that uh, you actually have uh, pretty much route variables that you can specify. So for example, here I have user. The user, very, you know, the user um, endpoint up here uh, pretty much just stops right there. But this endpoint down here, it actually has an additional section to it. And the syntax for defining pretty much a, uh, a custom route like this is that you put a colon in front of the variable that you'd like to define. And then when a user calls this route and includes this slash and then a value, that value will be set inside a variable that you can use within your endpoint. So for example, what I can do here is if I use invoke rest method again, um, you can see I have HTTP localhost user slash one, two, three. Since that falls into the ID section of this, um, this route here, uh, that will set an ID variable inside my endpoint. So now when I and execute that, oh, I gotta save this, otherwise it won't work. Um, and now when I execute that, you can see it returns one, two, three, which is um, the route variable that I specified for my endpoint. You can use multiple route variables. So if you wanted ID slash name or something like that, you could do that as well. Um, but they just can't be the same. So you have to have uh, uniqueness inside the uh, route variables that you use. Um, one other customization that you can uh, actually make for your endpoints is uh, the ability to uh, use query string parameters. So as you can see here, I've done nothing special inside this endpoint. It's just a user endpoint with the get method. It has an endpoint that is using the uh, search variable. So we're not actually defining that search variable anywhere in here, but what we can do is if we use invoke rest method, uh, again, if we specify a query string parameter, so you can see here, I have a question mark, then search equals test. Uh, it's actually going to set a variable automatically for us inside our endpoint there and set it to test. So let's execute that. And now you can see that test was returned because I sent it in through the query string parameter. So PowerShell Universal just kind of does that automatically for you. All right, so let's get into a couple more complicated scenarios. Um, first of all, let it, let's look at how to send uh, files into PowerShell Universal. So we're gonna create a new endpoint and we're gonna call it file. And we're gonna use the post method again to upload a file to this particular endpoint. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the automatic data variable. 
So unlike body, data is actually just the byte array that is returned um, as part of the HTTP request. So rather than a, um, a string, it's just going to be the byte array. So that's good for things like files. So in this case, I'm going to send up an image. And then we're going to use the um, system.io.file write all bytes uh, method to actually write that image out to um, the temp directory into image.png. So if I save that and get our endpoint set up, um, and then what I'm going to do is I actually have this invoke rest method uh, or web request in this case, and I'm going to specify uh, the file endpoint, and I'm going to use the in file property to actually specify a file that I want to upload up to my endpoint. And then I want to make sure that I specify the, the post method. So you can see here that we got a 200. Um, uh, actually, the file that I was opening here is this logo.png that was just sitting on my desktop. Now, what we can actually go and see is if we use um, start process to uh, pop open that file, you'll see that it was actually written to our uh, temp directory. So pretty much what happened is I took invoke uh, web request sent this file from my desktop via the uh, HTTP request here. And then PowerShell Universal got the data from that request and then wrote it as a binary um, array to uh, image.png. So that's kind of how you can deal with um, uh, binary files. Um, this really could handle any file. You could put text files and do the same thing. Uh, but if you need to process things like Excel files or anything that's like non-text, um, based, uh, this is a good way to actually store those files. So in reverse, you can actually send files from PowerShell Universal down to uh, the user. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an image endpoint, uh, the URL being image. And then inside our endpoint, we're actually going to read, all right, let's change this to PNG so that file exists. Um, and we're going to read though that image data from our temp directory and store it into here. So what that's doing is it's calling read all bytes. So we get a byte array here, and that's using one of the um, uh, the custom commandlets inside uh, PowerShell Universal to write a custom response down from our API. So uh, as you can see, like previously, we were always just kind of returning things from API, and those will automatically be converted uh, to JSON if possible. But if you want to use a custom uh, response, what you can do here is uh, use new PSU API response. Um, and in this case, we're going to specify the content type of image PNG, I guess. And then uh, the data is the image data. So now uh, we should be able to uh, use invoke rest method and use out file this time to write the image to our desktop. And you can see it executed there. And now if I look at this image.png, it wrote that image down to my desktop. So this just kind of went the opposite. Just to recap, we read the file that we actually wrote with the previous endpoint um, into a byte array, and then we sent it down over HTTP. And then we invoked that REST method with uh, invoke web request to save the file back to my desktop. Um, in addition to being able to specify uh, content type and data for these uh, custom responses, you can also specify things like status code. So um, there might be some reason you want to return a custom status code from your API. Um, and in this case, if I do invoke uh, web request HTTP localhost 5000 slash custom, you're going to see that I got a 410, which is gone. So uh, you could return any uh, standard HTTP status code from your um, particular endpoint. Um, and finally, I want to talk a little bit about authorization. So um, PowerShell Universal supports uh, a bunch of different authorization methods. Um, the API feature supports Windows authorization. It supports um, it supports the token-based uh, JWT token authorization, and it supports um, the uh, Windows or the forms-based um, cookie authentication. Uh, pretty much the kind of more standard way to do things uh, is using the JWT tokens. So what you can do is, if we actually pop into our console again, um, you can generate uh, API tokens for PowerShell Universal by going to the uh, settings, um, 
security page. And then there's this app tokens section. And this will actually allow you to grant new app tokens and then you can copy those app token values to your clipboard and then use those to call your APIs that are authenticated. So if we look at our API section here, you can see that the API that I just created here, the auth one requires authentication while all the other ones don't. So these are all pretty much open APIs, but this last one here, you can't call without an API token. So just as an example of not being able to call that, if I were to call auth right now, you're going to see that it is going to return a 401 because it was unauthorized to actually call this because I had the authorization parameter uh, set on PSU endpoint. But if I were to actually um, specify headers, um, and then I want to use the authorization header, and the way you format this is you say bearer, and then you put your authorization token in there and you just uh, make sure you have a space in between bearer and your token. And then when you call this, you're gonna see that I was uh, capable of pretty much calling that authorization or auth authenticated endpoint via the uh, method here using um, my JWT bearer token. And it returned the content of auth, which is uh, what is in my endpoint. So in addition to being able to specify authorization or authentication, you can also specify authorization. So uh, there are actually uh, roles that you can um, pretty much denote who has access to this particular endpoint. So uh, if we were to set that up, uh, pretty much what you'd have to do is inside our uh, security settings here, you can see that we have custom roles available. And based on what roles that, that this particular token has, uh, they may or may not be able to call that particular endpoint. So in this configuration, my admin user actually has all roles, but you could cu customize this to have custom roles or use one of the built-in roles to actually lock down uh, who gets to call this particular endpoint. So in this video, we went over a bunch of different ways to build um, custom APIs using PowerShell with PowerShell Universal. Uh, pretty much everything that I showed here is free aside from the authentication and authorization pieces. So definitely uh, go and grab uh, PowerShell Universal from our downloads page or uh, Docker Hub to get it up and running really quickly. And then you can use the uh, PowerShell Universal Visual Studio Code extension to quickly develop uh, APIs using PowerShell. So if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel.